very good morning my dear students i welcome to my third class on the subject design of rcc structural element 10 cp 52 in fact we were discussing uh, the concept of design of uh, rcc columns and the learning outcome of today's class is that the students will be able to understand uh, the design concepts of spiral column today in comparison with the tight column and also we will be seeing some problems uh, related to axially loaded columns as per is 456 2000 which is the mother code for concrete so in fact uh, in the yesterday's class uh, we have uh, seen as to what the load carrying capacity of the axially loaded tight column in fact uh, we have derived this equation i request the students to concentrate on this equation 0.4 fck ac plus 0.67 fy ac so this is what the formula that has been derived for the tight columns so as far as this particular formula is concerned we have two components the first uh, part of the formula is the load carried by the concrete part the second one is uh, the load carried by the steel part in fact uh, if you see the formula the formula was 0.44 fck ac plus 0.75 fy ac so in fact uh, that 0.75 has been reduced by 10% and similarly 0.446 has been reduced by 10% in other words the formula for the tight column as a whole has been reduced by 10% to take care of uh, the minimum eccentricity of the axial load and with that uh, the formula for the tight column that has been derived is like this 0.4 fck ac plus 0.67 fy ac now in fact uh, the load carrying capacity of the spiral column provided with helical reinforcement is taken equal to that of the tight column sometimes it will be taken as 5% extra compared to what the load a similar tight column will take so in other words the ultimate load carrying capacity of the spiral column or the helical column is equal to 1.05 times the ultimate load carried by the corresponding tight column in fact this 5% extra load is permitted by the code provided if you have provided enough helical reinforcement in the concrete so that is the reason why i have included here provided the ratio of the volume of the helical reinforcement kindly see volume of the helical reinforcement to that of the volume of the core core of the concrete shall not be less than so this is what uh, the ratio the ratio of the volume of the helical steel to that of the volume of the core concrete uh, if it is uh, greater than or equal to it should not be less means it is greater than or equal to 0.36 into gross area of the concrete divided by the area of the core concrete minus 1 into fck divided by fy where fck is the characteristic strength of the concrete and fy is uh, the yield strength of the spiral steel limited to 4 on 5 so let us see this one in detail so ag as i told you it is the gross area of the section and ac is the area of the core of the helically reinforced column measured to the outside diameter of the helix so in fact this is where students should be very careful so in fact i have given the cross sectional detail of the column so you can see the overall uh, width of the column that is uh, the diameter of the column is capital d so you can see that uh, this is what the reinforcement the helical reinforcement in the form of a, a spiral that is wound over the length of the column so in fact uh, we have to take the diameter of the core as the diameter measured from outside of the core outside of the helical steel to the outside you can see here so this is what the diameter you can make out here so outside of the helical steel means this particular point so from this point to this point uh, is what the diameter of the core and in fact the area has to be calculated based on that core diameter the core diameter is represented as uh, dc and the corresponding area pi d square by 4 is what the area of the core concrete so with this uh, so we need to satisfy this particular uh, uh, relation <coughs> in other words what the volume of the helical reinforcement you are going to give if it is more than this particular formula means uh, then the load carrying capacity can be taken as 5% extra otherwise by chance if this relation is uh, uh, not going to be valid in case the volume is slightly less than this uh, then this 5% is not permitted means uh, the load carrying capacity of the helically reinforced column is equal to that of the tight column provided the volume of the spiral is less than what that is given by this particular formula so only in the event of this volume of the helical steel more than this uh, then this extra 5% is permitted so the load carrying capacity of the helical steel is 5% extra provided this relation is satisfied otherwise it is same as that of the tight column now with this uh, 
you can see as to what this particular uh, formula works out to be. In fact, I have uh, given the longitudinal elevation of the column consisting of uh, this uh, helical steel. So, this is what the steel wound around the column you can uh, make out and one particular diameter of the helical steel you can see here. The diameter of the steel itself is uh, phi SP, SP means uh, spiral uh, uh, reinforcement. So, this is uh, what the helical I am talking of and this is provided at a pitch of SV. Now, what is the helical steel? So, this is what the helical steel is. So, you can see the cross sectional area of the helical steel is this one. So, the diameter being uh, DSP, this is what the diameter. Obviously, the helical steel volume, what is the volume occupied by this steel? So, that is nothing but area of the spiral cross section and pi d s h. So, this is what the diameter of the spiral. So, diameter of the spiral is taken as the diameter from the center of the spiral to the center of the spiral. So, that is what is uh, pi d s and area of the spiral. So, this is the cross sectional area. So, I have uh, uh, represented that area as uh, a into h s sorry a h s. So, this is what the cross sectional area of the spiral and this is uh, the perimeter. So, in fact, the perimeter is pi into d c. DC means the diameter from out to out of the spiral. So, of the diameter of the spiral from one side and similar of the diameter from the other side has to be subtracted. In other words, one diameter of the spiral has to be subtracted, but you know the diameter of the spiral is very, very small in comparison with uh, the core diameter of the concrete. So, this DC minus of uh, this spiral dia can be taken as DC itself. So, with that cross sectional area of the spiral, so this is what the area I am talking of into the circumference. So, circumference is pi into d c approximately the diameter is taken as d c. So, volume of the concrete is nothing but, so the cross sectional area of the core concrete. So, that is pi d c square where d c is the diameter of the core concrete. Again, this is what the diameter from out to out of the spiral into the spacing. So, this is what the volume I am talking of. So, kindly you can uh, uh, refer to this uh, sketch. So, this is what the cross sectional area over a height equal to the pitch SV, the volume taken by the concrete is this much. So, obviously, the ratio of the volume of the helical steel to that of the concrete, core concrete is given by this and if you divide one by the other, so this reduces to 4 times the cross sectional area of the spiral divided by the core diameter into the spacing. So, this is uh, what uh, the volume of the helical steel in comparison with the volume of the core but the code says that, so this particular ratio should not be less than, means uh, it should be greater than 0.36 uh, into this much. So, this is what the formula you need to remember and with this particular formula after the substitution to the left hand side works out to be this much. So, I request the students to remember this particular formula. So, from this formula it is possible to identify what should be the volume of the spiral in comparison with the volume of the concrete as a function of the area of the spiral. So, if you know the area of the spiral assuming certain diameter, so you can calculate the spacing of the spiral or if the spacing of the spiral is known or if it is assumed to start with in any problem, we need to identify what minimum area of the spiral that is required and from that what is the minimum cross sectional area of the spiral. So, knowing the area or the diameter, the spacing can be calculated or vice versa. So, if that much of a steel is provided or slightly more than that, then the real confinement of the core comes into picture and in that sense, the spiral really contributes to the strength of the core concrete. So, in that case, uh, 5 percent extra load can be allowed and uh, this is uh, what the formula in that situation. So, by chance if this formula is uh, not satisfied, if this condition of the formula is not satisfied, then 5 percent extra load is not permitted, then the load carried by the spiral column is same as that of the tight column. So, the last thing is uh, <coughs> the slender compression member, axially loaded uh, slender compression member. So, in fact, uh, this particular topic uh, is not included in the syllabus, but uh, if you see majority of the practical columns, invariably they will be slender in nature. As a result of that, uh, there will be some additional uh, moments coming into picture uh, in addition to the design moments. So, there is a separate provision uh, uh, given in uh, IS 456-2000, the mother code and I request the students to refer to this particular code in case uh, they deal with slender column. Just to read. The design of slender compression members shall be based 
on the forces and the moments determined from the analysis of the structure. So, we need to calculate uh, all possible forces basically the axial load and the moments not only at the top even at the bottom of the column. So, in other words, so the column is subjected to axial load plus the moments. But if you see there is already some eccentricity associated with the column because it is slender. The slender column has got the uh, susceptibility to, to bend in the lateral direction. So, as a result of that uh, as the load is increased uh, the column bends further and further in the lateral direction. So, as a result of that some additional bending moment uh, will be developed in the column and that has to be considered in addition to the design moments. So, that is what uh, the course says. So, when the effect of the deflections are not taken into account in the analysis additional moment given in class 39.7.1 of IS456 shall be taken into account in appropriate direction. So, this is uh, what the uh, situation is I request the students to refer to all these specifications in case they are dealing with uh, slender compression members. But as far as the examination is concerned it is uh, most of the problems are uh, in connection with axially loaded short columns. So, let us see some of the problems on axially loaded uh, short columns. So, this is what the, the first uh, problem is. <coughs> so, I will read the problem. Determine the load carrying capacity of the rectangular column. So, you can see the rectangular column. So, this is how it looks like. The size of the column is 300 by 400. Width of the column is 300. The depth of the column is uh, 400 mm. Reinforced with 6 rods of 20 mm diameter called 6 dash hash 20. The grade of the concrete and uh, the grade of the steel are M20 and uh, Fe415 respectively. Assume that the column is short. So, whether it is uh, mentioned or not, uh, so you have to assume that the column is short. So, then only the use of uh, this particular formula comes into picture. But one important uh, thing I would like to tell you is that uh, whenever the problem on column is defined, so this is not sufficient to define the problem. So, we need to give the length of the column that is the unsupported length of the column and also we need the end conditions of the column. So, that the effective length of the column with respect to major axis and minor axis can be identified. So, that uh, we can define whether the column is uh, really short or slender. So, such type of problems uh, we will be discussing slightly later and this is a very simple problem where we need to determine the load carrying capacity of the column based on the cross sectional detail. So, in fact, uh, we call it as section strength of the column and not giving any importance to the length of the column and the end conditions. So, since the length is not given, so we will be invariably assuming the column to be short and that is what is given. But uh, you know that uh, in IS 456, uh, so this is what the formula that will give you the ultimate load carrying capacity of the short column. So, this formula takes into consideration the minimum eccentricity because of the applied load. And by chance if that eccentricity exceeds uh, uh, the limit definitely this particular formula is uh, not applicable. The load carrying capacity of the column uh, in fact uh, decreases. Now, in this particular case the minimum eccentricity as given by the formula cannot be determined, but uh, if you remember that minimum eccentricity. So, the one value as given by the formula and also we have one more value 20 mm. So, 20 mm or the eccentricity as given by the formula whichever is greater has to be considered. But since uh, we cannot calculate uh, the eccentricity because of the formula where the unsupported length is required, but we need to take 20 mm of minimum eccentricity. Now, with that 20 mm of minimum eccentricity and uh, if you see here the allowable E as per IS456 is only 5 percent of the dimension B or D depending on the situation. And if you see the 5 percent of the dimension, so these are the two dimensions of the column 300 and 400. So, 5 percent of 300 is uh, 15 mm, whereas 5 percent of uh, 400 mm is uh, 20 mm. So, in the longer direction, so the column can take 5 percent of uh, the eccentricity. In other words, uh, so what minimum eccentricity that is permitted, so that is taken by this dimension, whereas uh, along the shorter dimension. Uh, if you see 5 percent of this 300 is uh, 15 mm. So, in other words, uh, so this particular dimension 300 can take only 15 mm of uh, the eccentricity, but the code says that we need to take uh, 
20 mm of eccentricity. So, the minimum dimension of the column in such situation is 400 by 400. So, whether we are dealing with a rectangular column, square column, circular column, as long as the dimension of the column is more than 400 mm, so we can presume that the minimum eccentricity of 20 mm is taken care of by the column. But however, we need to work out as to what the actual eccentricity based on the formula also and from that the maximum eccentricity has to be identified and 5 percent of the dimension of the column if it is more than that eccentricity then the column can be really be assumed as short and the eccentricity problem is well within the limit. So, then only this particular formula can be used, but in this particular problem as one of the dimension is 300. So, definitely there is uh, an eccentricity of 20 mm to be considered, but 15 mm of eccentricity what permitted by the side uh, is not sufficient. So, obviously the load carrying capacity of the column decreases, but however, so we will be using the same formula, but we have to make a comment that uh, the dimension of the column is less than 400 mm and as such it is not able to take 20 mm of eccentricity leaving that apart. So, the load carrying capacity is given by this particular formula. So, 0.4 FCK into AC, 0.67 FY into AAC, where AC is the area of the core concrete, AAC is the area of the steel. But if you see in this case, uh, the load is given PU. So, the area of the concrete uh, can also be determined provided uh, the area of the steel is known. But to start with, we really do not know as to what the steel is many a times, but in this formula, in this problem the steel is given, but if steel is not given, you have to assume certain percentage of the steel and then the problem has to be worked out. But in this simple problem, everything is given so that the load carrying capacity can be determined straight away. So, the area of the steel, so 6 rods of 20 mm, so area of 20 mm bar is 314 mm square. So, with that uh, the total area works out to be 884 mm square. So, what is the percentage of steel provided? The percentage of steel provided is P is equal to 100 AAC divided by BD. So, 840, 884 is what the area, 100 into that area divided by the dimension of the column 300 into 400. So, that works out to be 1.57. So, the minimum steel to be provided is 0.8 percent, the maximum that is permitted is 6 percent and since this 1.57 is well within this uh, limit, uh, so this range, uh, so this steel is okay. So, the area of the concrete is now AC that is the gross area 300 into 400 minus of the area of the steel 884. So, if you calculate this much, then the total area of the concrete is this much. So, with this uh, area of the concrete and if you substitute here 0.4 FCK, FCK is 20, area of the core concrete is uh, this much plus 0.67 into FY, the yield strength of steel given as 415 into 1884. So, this is what the area of the steel. So, this is uh, in fact, uh, there is a mistake. So, the area of uh, 20 mm rod is uh, 314. So, 314 into 6, if you do it, it is not 884, it is 1884 and in fact, that is what the correct value that has been taken in the calculation, but here only the 1 is missing. So, with that, uh, the load carrying capacity of the column is given by this much in terms of Newton. So, that is equal to 1464 kilo Newton. So, this is what the ultimate load carrying capacity of the column, but uh, the safe load carrying capacity of the column. So, what maximum load the column can carry means uh, the carrying load or the working load or the service load and that is also called as allowable load or the permissible load and that is equal to the ultimate load as given by PU divided by the partial safety factor that is 1.5 for the combination of the loads. So, we are dealing with dead load and live load and if the load is uh, corresponding to dead load and live load then this 1.5 can be taken. So, dividing the ultimate load by 1.5, so the safe load carrying capacity of the column is 979 kilo Newton. So, approximately 97 ton. So, roughly 98 ton is what the load carrying capacity of the column. It is an enormous amount of load. But if you see here, so there are two parts. The first part is uh, the load taken by the concrete. Since the cross section is uh, constant, uh, 
So the column can take about 94 ton. In other words, 94.4. In other words, uh, this is what the load taken by the concrete part. So this is uh, what the load taken by the uh, steel part. But if you increase uh, the percentage of steel, in this case it is 1.57 percent. So because of that much of a steel, so the column is uh, able to carry this much of additional load. Now if you want to increase the load carrying capacity of the same column without increasing the dimension, then you have to either increase the grade of the concrete or you have to increase the grade of the steel or in this particular case, uh, since uh, we have provided only 1.5 percent, uh, still you can go up to 6 percent. So by increasing this com, uh, component, so the load carrying capacity of the column can be further increased. So by chance if you give about 3 percent of the steel, uh, so this uh, quantity is increased by another 100 percent. So definitely the load carrying capacity of the column keep on increases uh, as the percentage of steel is increased right from 0.8 percent to something like 6 percent for the given area of the concrete. So these are uh, some of the parameters we need to look at uh, how exactly this can be operated so that the load carrying capacity of the column can be increased further and further. Now this is what the load carrying capacity for M20 concrete. So by chance if M25 concrete is given, so definitely the first part increases and if FCK becomes uh, 30. M30 concrete, so then this also increases further. So definitely the additional load carrying capacity of the column for the given dimension and for the given type and grade of steel, eh, so increases as the grade of the concrete also increases. So you can identify what is the contribution of the grade of the concrete or what is the contribution of increasing the grade of the steel or even the magnitude of the steel. So in that case, uh, the load carrying capacity of the column increases further and further depending on the amount of concrete and the amount of steel and also based on their grades. So let us see one more uh, simple problem. Determine the steel required to carry a load of 980. So in fact, this is what the working load I have taken from the previous problem on a rectangular column of size 300 by 400. In fact, I have taken the same size of the column but the same load uh, that has been determined in the previous problem has been taken here. So doing the problem in the reverse direction uh, is uh, what we are doing here. The grade of the concrete and steel is same as M20 and FE415. Assume that the column is short. Suggest the arrangement for transfer steel. So this is a very, very important thing. So many students will commit mistake uh, in this. So they will be designing the transfer steel but many a times they will not be able to arrange uh, the transfer steel properly depending on uh, the various specifications that are there in IS456. So this is what the column is 300 by 400. So FCK is 20, FY is 4 on 5 megapascal. The working load is uh, 980 kilo Newton. So the area of the steel uh, is to be calculated. So here the dimension is given. So the area of steel is not known, but you have uh, one formula. So if you use this particular formula, in this formula everything is known except the area of the steel. But we know that the area of the concrete AC which is required in the first part of the equation that is equal to gross area minus of the area of the steel. So we need to assume uh, some percentage of steel or directly in this case as AAC is unknown. So that can be substituted like this so that uh, the whole of the formula is now reduced to so simple equation in the form of AAC. So now you see here the ultimate load is working load into 1.5 into 1000. So this is what the working load into 1.5 means the ultimate load in Newton. So that is equal to 0.4 into 20. So this is uh, what the area of the concrete. So the area of the steel is ASC 0.67 into 4 on 5. So if you simplify this further, so this is what the next step is. So with this uh, the area of the steel works out to be 1888.5 mm square. In fact, this is what the area of the steel in the previous problem also. So with this the percentage of steel, so it is the same percentage uh, like uh, 100 AAC by BD with the substitution it is 1.57 percent. Of course, within uh, this range of 0.8 percent to 6 percent. So it is okay. So provide 20 mm dia bars, the number of bars is equal to 
So, the total area divided by area of 1 bar, it is 6.01. So, that is rounded off to 6. If it is something like 6.1 or 6.0, then we have to provide 7 bars, but in a square column or in a rectangular column, 7 cannot be provided, then we have to provide uh, 8 bars. So, with that, the area of the steel provided will be higher, much more than what is required. So, in that case, uh, we need to arrange uh, the reinforcement taking appropriate diameters. So, different diameters have to be taken and they have to be arranged uh, properly in the given area, so that uh, the area of the steel provided is exactly equal to the required area. So, we will be seeing uh, such type of problems also later. Then the design of transfer steel for the same uh, problem. So, we have seen in the previous classes, the diameter of the transfer steel in the form of a tie is equal to one fourth of the diameter of the steel or 6 mm, whichever is maximum. One fourth of the diameter of the steel, if you see here, it is 20 mm divided by 4, that is 5 mm or 6 mm, whichever is greater means uh, we have to provide 6 mm. So, in this present case, I am providing 6 mm uh, diameter tie, but in practice, uh, if you see, generally we provide 8 mm uh, tie in all practical problems. So, here also in examination, we can either go by 6 mm or you can go by 8 mm. So, if you go by 6 mm, then the configuration of the tie will be different. If you go by 8 mm, again the configuration will be different depending on what the distance between these two corner bars. Let us assume 6 mm uh, tie, then uh, the spacing of the tie is minimum of uh, the following three. So, the spacing should not be less than 300 mm, one of the requirement it should be less than 16 times the diameter of the mine bar. So, mine bar is 20 mm. So, definitely 16 into 20 is uh, 320. So, it should be less than least lateral dimension of the column that is 300. In this particular case, out of 300 and 400, the minimum is 300. So, in that way, least lateral dimension is 300. So, amongst these three, which is the minimum? So, 300 is the minimum. So, you can provide at 300 mm center to center. So, you can even reduce it further if you want something like 280 mm or so. So, 6 mm diameter at 300 mm center to center is what they transfer reinforcement. So, generally we provide 6 bars something like this and we give one tie, a single tie covering the 4 corner bars. In fact, this configuration is wrong. The reason is the code says that the distance between the 2 longitudinal bar measured from one corner to the another corner. So, if this distance is more than 300, then one central rod is to be provided. So, the condition is satisfied here, but here also if you see the condition is uh, not satisfied. So, this is uh, the effective cover. If you take the effective cover something like 50 mm, 40 mm of clear cover plus uh, half the diameter of the mine bar. So, that is 50 mm. So, exactly 50 mm here and 50 mm here. So, it is 100 mm. So, the distance between the center of this corner bar to this corner bar will become uh, 300 mm. So, definitely, so in this case 6 bars are there. So, we have given one more bar at the center. Now, you have to measure this distance. The distance between these two successive bars, if it is less than 75 mm, then this bar can be left as it is without tying. But here, this distance is definitely more than uh, 75. So, we need to tie these two bars also, but how it is to be tied is the next question. Is it to be tied with the closed tie, so that we have two closed ties or is it that we have to tie with a open tie, so that one closed tie, one closed tie and one open tie comes into picture, provided the distance between these two corner bar, if it is less than 48 times the diameter of the tie, then it is open tie. If this distance is more than 48 times the diameter of the tie, then it is a closed tie. So, let us see that calculation in the next slide. So, I have given all the details here. So, this is uh, 300 mm, this is uh, 400 mm. So, the effective cover is 40 according to the code. Half the diameter of the bar is 10. So, the effective cover is 50. So, the clear cover or the nominal cover, the nominal cover is taken as outside to the surface of the mine reinforcement. That is what the nominal cover is. It is not to the outside of the tie. It is to the outside of the mine reinforcement plus of the diameter comes into picture. So, again there is a small mistake here. So, the effective cover equal to 
clear cover or the nominal cover. So, this is actually nominal cover or the clear cover plus the diameter by 2. So, this is 50. So, this is 50. So, the remaining is 200 and that is less than 300. So, it is okay. But when you come to the longer dimension, again this is uh, 50. So, another 50 here. So, inside if you measure it, uh, so this is uh, 300 mm. So, this 300 mm is greater than 48 times the diameter of the tie. So, tie is 6 mm, 48 into 6 is 288. So, since this 300 is more than 288, means the total amount of concrete in this core is more because of the fact that this distance is 300 mm more than 48 times 6, 48 times the diameter of the tie. Obviously, we need to confine this uh, larger amount of concrete. So, that type of a confinement comes into picture only when you tie these two along with the closed ties something like this. So, that is the reason you cannot provide one bigger tie like this. It is two ties, but two shorter short ties are to be provided. So, this is one tie which is black in color, another is red in color. So, like that it in the cross section at particular level we will be having two ties. So, this is a single tie arrangement. So, this is not permitted. So, this is the double tie arrangement and this is what the correct configuration of the tie. And we cannot leave these two bars uh, without any tie because the distance between these two successive bars if you say it is more than 75. So, more than 75. So, you have to tie it, but what is the tie? Is it a open tie or closed tie? But taking this condition, so it is a closed tie. So, by chance if you have provided 8 mm tie instead of 6 mm tie, then 48 times of 8, uh, so that will be higher. So, definitely 300 mm is uh, less than that. In that situation, it becomes a open tie. So, just one single open tie if you provide like this, you can see the cursor. So, if one single open tie if you provide, then it is okay. In that case, we need to go for 8 mm diameter. In this case, since it is 6 mm diameter, so this is what the configuration of the lateral steel in the cross section. So, let us see the third problem. Design a square as well as circular column to carry a working load of 980 kilo Newton. The grade of the concrete and steel or M20 and Fe415 respectively assume that the column is short. In fact, I have taken the same load so that you can compare as to what will be the type of column from rectangular to square or from square to circular. So, that some sort of a parametric study you can make uh, for different uh, cross sectional uh, features of the column. FCK is uh, 20 mm, FY is uh, 4 on 5, so P is uh, 980. So, let us assume 1 percent of steel. So, in this particular problem, the dimension of the column is not given. So, we can assume some dimension and then you can calculate the percentage of steel or you can assume some percentage of steel and then the cross section has to be identified. But in this particular case, so since there are two unknowns, cross sectional dimension of the column not known the area of the steel is also not known. So, what I am doing is I am assuming some percentage of the steel so that uh, I will work out the cross sectional area and then the actual area of the steel. So, let us assume 1 percent of steel. So, usually 1 to 2 percent is uh, assumed, but in fact uh, this percentage should be within uh, the range 0.8 percent or 6 percent. So, I have told you, so this 6 percent sometimes uh, cause congestion. So, this can be reduced to 4 percent also. So, 0.8 to 4 percent. So, generally higher percentage of steel is not provided. So, as the percentage of the steel increases, that is what we have seen in the previous problems, the load carrying capacity of the column uh, is uh, increases tremendously because of the steel. So, the load taken by the concrete counterpart will be rather less and with that the area of the cross section becomes very small. And with that, uh, the column may become slender and uh, the formula for the axially loaded column is not applicable. So, and also we have the minimum eccentricity problem if the size of the column is less. So, that is why in the examination I request the students to start with uh, minimum percentage of steel like 0.8 percent or 1 percent like what I have done here. So, here the area of steel AAC is 1 percent of uh, the gross area AG that is 1 by 100 of AG with that uh, 0 0.01 AG. 
for most of the problem it will be 0 0.01 AG only if you assume 1 percent so that you can remember some of these things in the for uh, in the problem. So, therefore, the area of the concrete is gross area minus of uh, the area of the steel which is uh, 0 0.01 of AG. So, with that it becomes 0 0.99 AG. So, AC equal to 0 0.99 AG as long as you have 1 percent of steel. So, I request the students to remember this simply AC equal to 0.99 of AJ if 1 percent is used, otherwise if you use 2 percent then this becomes 0 0.98 AG. So, using the same formula ultimate load carried by the column is PU equal to 0.4 FCK AC, 0.67 FY AC, the load is uh, the working load. So, that is why 1.5 the partial safety factor into 1000, so that uh, the load is in Newton. So, 0 0.4 into 20 into 0 0.99 AG, 0 0.67 area of uh, steel is uh, 0 0.01 AG. So, uh, uh, 4 and 5 is uh, the yield strength of uh, steel. Now, if you simplify this expression, so this is uh, works out to be 10.7 AG. So, as long as you use 1 percent of steel, so straight away your PU is 10.7 AG, up to this uh, it is constant. So, student can simply remember. So, 10.7 AG is what the answer as long as you have 1 percent of steel. So, like that for 1.5 percent and 2 percent what will be this right hand side. So, that can be remembered so that uh, we can save some time in the examination also. So, now the ultimate load in Newton equated to this one. So, AG is uh, this much. So, this is what the area of the column cross section, the gross section. Let us design the square column to start with. So, the dimensions are same. So, B equal to D equal to under the root of uh, what the area you have here. So, it works out to be 370.6 mm. So, we can round off this to 375 into 375. So, again I request the students to observe this uh, 375 by 375. So, in fact, it is uh, advisable to provide the size greater than 400 by 400. So, that uh, minimum eccentricity of 20 mm is taken care of by that dimension. But once the size of the column along with the other dimensions like the unsupported length and the end conditions are given, again we need to identify the actual eccentricity and based on that uh, we have to decide whether the size is okay or not. But if you take 375 into 375, the minimum eccentricity of 20 mm cannot be taken by the column. So, it fails. So, you have to mention like that, then the load carrying capacity has to be calculated as given by this particular formula. But however, this size cannot take the minimum eccentricity of 20 mm as E minimum by D is greater than 0 0.05. In this case, it is 0 0.053 greater than 0 0.05. You can do either like this or you can also calculate 5 percent of the dimension of the column. 5 percent of the dimension means 5 percent of the size. The size is 375, 5 percent of that is 18.75 means. Uh, so, the column can take 18.75 mm of eccentricity. So, that this formula can be used, but now in this case the column has to take 20 mm. So, your column size cannot take 20 mm as such this particular formula cannot be used. So, in other words, so this is what the forum, this is what the problem where it is subjected to eccentricity effect. This is an axially loaded column along with that there is a moment because of minimum eccentricity, it is a uni axially loaded column. So, that is the reason why I have taken 400 mm by 400 mm as the size of the column, so that uh, so this particular formula can be used. So, that is the reason to restrict the eccentricity to 20 mm, the required size of the column is 400 mm by 400 mm. But when you are providing the reinforcement, it is again 1 percent of what the area of the concrete required to carry the load, but not based on what the area you are going to provide something like this. So, 1 percent of the required area, not 1 percent of what the area will be providing otherwise. So, what still we have provided is okay and the dimension of the column should be 400 by 400, so that 20 mm of eccentricity can be taken care of by the column and this formula can be used.
Now the area of the steel is AG that is 1373.8 mm square. So, provide 4 bars of 22 mm diameter. The steel provided is 380 into 4 1520 mm square. <coughs> this is what the area corresponding to 1 percent. Actual percentage of steel if you calculate using this 100 AAC divided by BD. So, it works out to be 0 0.95 percent which is more than 0 0.8 percent and less than 6 percent and therefore, it is okay. So, we assumed 1 percent because we have given slightly more area. So, the actual area of steel provided is 0 0.95 percent, but anyway it is greater than 0 0.8 and hence it is okay. What about uh, the transfer steel? That is what the next design is. So, the design of transfer steel, diameter of the tie is one fourth of the diameter of the mine steel, but in this case it is 22 by 4. 5.5 mm or 6 mm whichever is greater. So, I am providing 6 mm tie. So, this 6 mm tie in practice it is a round bar, but we do not have a ribbed bar of Fe 415 type or 500 type corresponding to 6 mm and uh, that is the reason why in practice 8 mm ribbed bars belonging to Fe 415 type or 500 type is used, but uh, this 6 mm uh, is a mild steel bar and many a times uh, so, this is uh, not available in practice. Uh, so, you have to see whether this is available in practice so that this can be used. Otherwise, 8 mm ribbed bar has to be used. The spacing should not be less than 300 mm, sorry, should be less than 300 mm. It should be less than 16 times the diameter of the bar. So, when you provide different diameters, in fact, uh, they should be less than 16 times the diameter of the smaller bar. So, in this case all diameters are same. So, it is 16 into 22. So, 352 and least lateral dimension is uh, 400 mm. So, minimum of uh, these three is uh, 300 mm. So, tie 6 mm da at 300 mm center to center is what the transfer steel is. So, with this, so this is what the configuration is and you have to see whether this configuration is ok or not. So, kindly see here. So, this is what the effective cover, the clear cover or the nominal cover. In fact, uh, according to IS, so the nominal cover is uh, 40 mm plus of the die is 11. So, it is 51. So, this is uh, another 51 on to the other side. So, in between it is 298 less than 300 mm, it is okay. So, otherwise if it is more, we would have provided one more bar here. So, that is what the type of problem we have seen in the previous case. So, it is okay, but uh, the same thing will be there in the other direction also because it is a square column. But what is the distance from the center of the this corner bar to this corner bar? So, that is 298. In fact, that 298 is less than 300 mm. So, we need not have to provide a one more bar at this point. And also 48 times the diameter of the tie if you see. So, that is in this particular case if it is less than that, then we need not have to provide so, sorry. So, in, so, this is okay because we have only 4 bars. So, the question of identifying that does not come into picture. It is only 4 bar configuration. So, I got confused for the 8 bar conf configuration. So, because it is 4 bars and since there is no bar in between and the distance between the corner bars is less than 300 mm, it is absolutely fine. So, this is a very simple configuration of the square column where we have 4 rods of uh, 22 mm satisfying all the requirements. So, let us see the design of a circular column. Now, as far as the design of circular column is concerned, so I have taken the same area, gross area is uh, as given by the previous problem. So, equate this area to the area of the column pi d square by 4. So, therefore, d works out to be 418.2. So, this can be rounded off to 420 mm. So, this satisfies the minimum eccentricity of 20 mm. So, what is the minimum eccentricity? So, minimum eccentricity is uh, given by unsupported length by 500 plus the dimension of the column divided by 30. So, since these dimensions are not available in the present problem, so we will be taking 20 mm as the eccentricity, but the eccentricity taken by the size, the size of 420 is 5 percent of the dimension. So, the 5 percent of this dimension is 21 mm 
but whereas the minimum eccentricity is 20, so this dimension is okay. So, that is what I told you, as long as the dimension is more than 400 mm, you need not have to worry about uh, the minimum eccentricity of this 20 mm constant value, but if other dimensions of the column are given, then we have to work out uh, the other eccentricity also, then what is the actual warning eccentricity and based on that whether the dimension is okay or not has to be decided. So, let us provide uh, 7 bars of 16 mm dia. So, the area of uh, 16 mm is uh, 201 mm square, therefore, for 7 bars it is uh, 1407. So, more than what is required, the required is uh, 1373, 1 percent of the gross area. So, this is what the gross area, 1 percent of that is 1373, but what we have provided is uh, 1407, so it is okay. So, in the same way, the design of transfer steel is. So, it is uh, 6 mm. So, therefore, the spacing, the minimum of the 3, 300 mm or 16 times of the diameter, 16 into 16 is 256. So, this is what the governing value in the present problem, lit lateral dimension is 420. So, 256 is what the spacing that has been rounded off to 250. So, provide 6 mm tie at 250 mm center to center. So, this is what the configuration is and how the cross sectional details looks like. So, this is what the circular column. So, you can see. So, you can also see two hooks here means uh, it is a link, it is a tie. So, these ties are provided at 250 mm center to center. So, do not get confused this for the spiral. So, it is not a spiral column, it is a tied column where the lateral still is in the form of a link or a tie which is a circular tie at a spacing of 250 mm center to center. So, this is uh, what the next problem is. So, design a rectangular column to carry an ultimate load of uh, 2500 kilo Newton. So, in fact, it is a enormous amount of load 250 tons. The unsupported length of the column is uh, 3 meter. So, students should be very careful as far as this problem is concerned because uh, the unsupported length is coming for the first time. The ends of the column are effectively held in position and also restrained against rotation. So, what is the meaning of this? So, not only held in position, but also in the direction means uh, the ends of the column are fixed. The grade of concrete and steel as usual M 20 concrete and Fe 415 steel respectively and sketch the details. So, this is uh, what uh, the given information F C K is 20, F Y is 415, the ultimate load is 2500 and again as usual, so I am assuming 1 percent of steel. So, A S E is uh, 0 0.01 of A G. So, area of the concrete is 0 0.99 A G. In fact, uh, it is same as we have done in the previous problem. So, now the ultimate load carrying capacity of the column as given by the formula, assuming that the column is short. So, this is uh, what the formula is putting the load 2500, there is no 1.5 coming because it is ultimate load. So, with this uh, the gross area of the concrete column is this much. If the column is square, then taking the root of this answer, it is 483 mm. So, let us provide either a rectangular column or a circular column or a square column depending on the situation, but here I am providing a rectangular column. So, one of the dimension of the column should be less than this and one dimension should, should be more than this because I have taken the square root of the area and if it were to be a square column, something like 500 by 500 would have been ok and if it is a circular column, equate this answer to pi d square by 4 and determine the diameter. But in this particular case, uh, since I have to provide a rectangular column, I have reduced one of the dimension less than this, so that the other dimension is more than this such that the final dimension is 425 into 550. So, again I request the students to note as to what is the probable ratio of uh, the longer dimension to the shorter dimension of the column. So, the longer dimension of the column is uh, related something like this. So, the shorter direction. So, in fact, uh, the longer dimension capital D is 1.25 times to something like 2 times of the shorter dimension. So, in fact, uh, here it is not capital D, it is small d. So, capital D equal to 1.25 to 2 times. So, 25 percent to something like 200 percent 
in excess of B you can provide and with that uh, it is 425 by 550. So, that the area of the steel works out to be this much. So, slightly more than what the area required so that it is okay. What is the area of the steel to be provided? So, the area of the steel to be provided is 1 percent of uh, the area of the concrete. So, it works out to be 2336 mm square and with this provide 8 bars of 20 mm dia. So, that the area provided is 8 into 314 that is slightly more than what the area that is required. Hence, it is okay. So, students I will stop at this stage. In fact, as far as this particular problem is concerned, so we need to design the transfer stage. It hardly takes a, a few seconds, but what is important in this problem is to identify the configuration of the transfer steel later. So, this particular thing I will be explaining in the next class. So, in case you have uh, any doubts or clarifications, so you can ask. So, I will stop at this stage. Thank you very much.